What's up, Bodyweight Warriors, and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk to you about a potentially missing key when it comes to improving your pressing strength. And specifically here, I'm gonna be talking about bodyweight training. So we're gonna be talking about the planche, the handstand push-up, and then kind of the press to handstand. Those are the kind of core components of pushing strength. So today, I wanna to share with you kind of a core muscle component as well as a pattern that we need to understand and develop to really maximize our pressing strength and that is the serratus anterior. Now this muscle isn't just important for pressing strength there's also the kind of common issue that people have which is scapular winging and this video is also going to be applicable to them in terms of the drills and the application that we're going to be talking about. So if you suffer from a little bit of that that might be holding you back when it comes to your pressing strength. First up I want to start by saying that that really these drills are like the 10%, the 5% extra, the, the cherry on the top that you would add to the mainstay of your training. The majority of training should be focusing on getting stronger at those core compound movements. If you wanna get better at the handstand push-up, you need to be doing lots of handstand push-up related progressions. Basic strength training. The drills that I'm gonna share with you today is more about the accessory movements, potentially using as a warm up that's gonna help you just articulate things a little bit better if it's not already. It's just complementary to the main stuff. So first up, let's talk about a very simple test to begin with, just to, just to see if there's any winging present. And that would very simply be the wall push-up test. Simply enough, put your hands on the wall, do a push-up against the wall, look from the behind, how does it look? How are your shoulder blades moving? We wanna ideally see this move from slight retraction to retraction, so when the shoulder blades come together at the bottom, and then moving back out to retraction at the top. If we notice at any point this kind of scapula begins to wing and it comes away from the ribcage, then perhaps there is some instability, there are some issues there that could be worth addressing. This being said, it's not always the case. There is quite a lot of evidence that there are high level athletes with a very high level of strength who do have scapula winging. It's not the, the be all and end all. There is definitely a slight genetic component with how people's shoulders are structured, something I've noticed through coaching. That being said, I think working on improving that particular motion and, and the articulation of the scapula in this instance will, for most people, elicit some good benefits. Further to this, there's a couple of other tests or movement assessments that we can do, which I'm gonna to explain to you by just explaining the function of the stretch anterior. And it really has two key functions in bodyweight training that we care about. Number one is protraction of the shoulder blades, and number two is upward rotation. Protraction is one of those fundamental shoulder positions that you probably see and hear a lot of people talk about, and that is basically when the shoulder blades move apart and or away from the spine, they abduct. This is primarily due to activation of the pec minor, major, and the serratus anterior. So it's a fundamental part for something like the planche. It's fundamental for the handstand push-up. It's fundamental for the press to handstand. Very important for all of them. Likewise, with all of these movements, another thing that's very important is upward rotation. This is when the scapula kind of rotates around the rib cage a little bit more as we raise our arms to the side and then overhead. Now this occurs mainly through the activation of the traps, the external rotators, teres major, but then also of course, the serratus anterior. Now both of these movements that I just demoed here are also good assessments for you to take a look at as well. Film yourself from behind, do both of these movements, have a look about how that shoulder blade is moving. Do you notice any funkiness? If you notice any funkiness, maybe these drills might be helpful for you. But again, it doesn't need to be picture perfect. There is a lot of individuality that comes with human beings. Right, so enough of the details. Let's talk about drills, the things that actually matter, the things that are gonna do with. Uh, and we can kick things off with number one, and that is the serratus rock. There's a couple of ways in which we can perform this drill, but I wanna start with kind of the intention behind it. Really here, we're gonna be focusing on protraction of the shoulder blades, and we're gonna be focusing on locking that position in whilst having a small movement of the arm at the shoulder. Now the serratus is actually most active in that 90 degree position and above. So for this setup, we wanna place the hands a little bit in front of the shoulder blades. From here, we're gonna think about trying to push the floor away from us. And by doing so, we're gonna try and feel that protraction of the shoulder blades. One thing to watch out for here is that many people will shrug up at the shoulders and use the upper traps instead. We wanna actually try and maintain slightly depressed shoulder position. So trying to pull the shoulders down away from the ears whilst we maintain this position. Again, this is another important element for the planche. Once we've found that position, we wanna also externally rotate at the hand. So we wanna feel like the elbow pits are gonna be facing inwards or slightly forwards. 
From here, we're just gonna imagine that we have a point of a hinge, and that point is gonna be the top of the arm, and that is gonna be the only moving factor in this movement. From here, we're just gonna rock forwards and rock backwards, under nice and control, going through whatever range of motion kind of feels good and feels right. If at any point you kind of lose the feeling of what that position feels like, just reset, start again, and really try to lock that in. Then we can go to something like a push-up, a support position, and again, do the same movement. And then finally, if we want to, we can take this through a more full range of motion going into full shoulder flexion, and that would be pushing all the way backwards into a sort of downward dog position, not necessarily worrying about straight legs, more focusing again on the hinging only occurring at that shoulder joint. If you struggle to get this one in your head, even with that sort of basic kneeling position, what we can do is do the exact same movement, but in more of a forearm plank position. This one just helps, again, lock in a little bit that position. It's just taking out, again, more of those moving parts and simplifying down even further. Same form cues apply, same rocking back and forward, and then progress to the straight arm options instead. Number two, we've got the handcuff raise. Now, the first drill we focused on protraction in a closed chain movement, meaning our hands were locked. Here we're gonna be focusing on upward rotation, so the second movement, and we're gonna be doing an open chain method, so the hands are kind of free to move about. It's basically taking us for a little bit more of a full range of motion. We're essentially gonna be doing the same movement though, lifting the arms up through flexion, but this time we're gonna add a resistance band handcuffed around our hands, so we're gonna loop it, and then that is gonna help us apply some force outwards. Applying this force outwards is gonna help relax some of the pec, and it's gonna help us focus more on the activation of the traps and of the external rotators and the serratus anterior as we lift those hands through this movement. Probably one of the best things to do is just to, to give this drill a try with and without the band. Feel both, and I 100% guarantee you will feel the difference in how this movement feels. Just like the first drill, we wanna start in a protracted shoulder position. So we wanna try and reach away from us, but we don't wanna reach away from us so much that we're gonna be rounding the upper back. We just wanna reach away enough so that the shoulder blades begin to protract. Then, like the first drill, we wanna try and maintain slightly depressed shoulders, so pulling the shoulders away from the ears. And then from here, you just wanna lift the hands up as high as you comfortably can whilst trying to still pull outwards and maintain that good shoulder position. Always kind of reaching away from the body. Finally, we have the pullover. Now the pullover is somewhat controversial because it's not really a drill that's focused on the serratus anterior, but there is a reason that I like this one. There's certainly some EMG studies for barbell and dumbbell variations that show that the serratus is still pretty active Still one of the top sort of four muscles being involved in the movement, but obviously this is gonna be more biased towards the pec and then the tricep breakout a little bit more of the lats. But that being said, the reason I like this is that it trains the exact same movement that we've been trying to do, that lifting of the arms through shoulder flexion, that upward rotation, that protraction, but it's gonna do it through a different vector. The force is gonna be applied to the hands in a different way. Instead of trying to actively push and create this movement, this time we're gonna be trying to resist this movement. So it's gonna be that eccentric loading of controlling the force through this range of motion. Now, obviously there are a few different ways that you can set this one up. First of all, we can do this a bodyweight version of, and that would essentially be an ab wheel rollout. I'm actually not a massive fan of the ab wheel. I would personally prefer it to be done either using the rings, so like a rings rollout, or I quite like using a slider and then just kind of starting on your knees and doing essentially the same movement, but with the hands on the floor. Really the focus here should again be starting position, nice protracted shoulder blades, depressed shoulder blades, lock that position in, feel comfortable with that position. And then from there, let the hands slide out and try to feel and maintain that slight hollow body, try to avoid the arching position. And again, go as far as you feel that you can maintain the feeling and the connection of that position without losing it don't worry so much about going for a full range of motion, focus on the feeling of the drill. Next, we have the band variation. So this will be done in like a standing or a seated position with the anchor of the band behind you. From here again, starting with hands at 90 degrees, same sort of thing. Start with the protraction of the shoulder blades, that slight hollowing of the body, not rounding of the back, hollowing, protracted shoulders. And again, you would let the arms be lifted overhead, trying to resist that band pulling you. And then finally, we have the kind of standard bench or barbell pullover. This one again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but I would again think about it in the sense that we want to not have that thoracic extension happening that would commonly happen. So I'd start with this drill potentially even in like a tucked up position 
On the bench, I would start by trying to reach away with the hands. So we try to protract the shoulder blades from the get-go and then performing that lowering position, trying to feel the same sort of movement as we talked about in the other previous examples. Now, how exactly do we go about performing these? Because as I said before, one, these are accessory movements. They complement your main stuff. Your main stuff, that should be the main part of your session. Uh, and this stuff should be kind of maybe some remedial stuff at the end or maybe used as warm up. I'm gonna give you two options in terms of how I personally would set things up. So number one is as a warm up, I personally would probably use the serratus rocks and I would do this at the beginning of say a day where I was training planche or like stolder presses. Uh, or even hands and push up and I'd really just use it as a way of getting a feeling about locking that shoulder position in. I'd probably do a couple of sets of maybe 10 to 12 reps where I really focused on locking that shoulder position in, rocking backwards and forwards, feeling it out, maybe in a kneeling position to begin with, then maybe into more of a support position. And that for me would be more than enough as a warm up, and I'd jump into just doing some easier progressions of the thing that I was gonna train in my main session. Second, we have kind of an accessory movement and a way of building up capacity, doing a little bit more work and also developing shoulder flexibility. And that would be through doing a superset of both exercises two and three. So the handcuff raises followed by the pullovers, whatever progression you prefer. These movements work nicely as more of a conditioning drill because with the raises, we're gonna be actively working using the traps and lifting up and then with the pullover, we're gonna be strengthening the other side of the joint, but still through the same range of motion. As I said, works very nicely for one, really reinstating this position, conditioning this position, and it also will work really well for using and then developing that range of motion on that overhead position if you want things like handstand or just generally better shoulder flexibility. That's it. That's basically um, my thoughts on the serratus, its importance with bodyweight training and then a couple of ways to implement it simply, but not negating the fact you need to do this, the compound stuff, the main lifting. As always guys, if you have any questions or you think I've missed something, then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. If you just enjoyed this one, you can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it as well is that subscribe button if you want to join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But that has basically been it for this week guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.